YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, back on Total War Rome 2. And uh, I've got a replay that's uh, coming in from Blademaster. <laughs> I like how there's always someone in the comments that accuses me of doing Blademaster's second channel. Uh, no, he sends me this because obviously he wants you all to have something cool to watch. I like to play it because this, this mod is actually something that's kind of near and dear for me. I, I like it a lot. I've even considered doing a campaign in it just for fun. Um, even though I know it's not really a campaign-centric mod. I just like the changes that it brings to Rome 2. It's basically like a patch 20 um, for for Rome for Rome 2 that a lot of the stuff that the community wants that never got done. So I really appreciate Blade Master, and um, I can't remember the other guy's name. I'm gonna get it wrong if I do, but he's got someone that he's working with on this mod, and I apologize. Please make a comment, point yourself out because obviously I know you're a big big point uh, part of this too. Appreciate the work they're doing. So he wanted to basically show you this to highlight a couple of things that have changed in the Blade Balance mod more recently. And then also, uh, there's a group that he's created called Blade Balance Buddies. <laughs> I like it. And uh, essentially, it's just a group on Steam. I'll have a link down in the description. Go check it out. It's a, it's a group that you can get into so that if you want to play Total War Rome 2 multiplayer with these changes, you can join that group. It's people who join it. You can basically shout out to each other that you want to play some matches, you can set the stuff up, set up tournaments, whatever you want to do. So basically it's a group where you can get together, enjoy some Rome too. So yeah, check it out. And in this he wants to highlight that basically Cartley and regular Axemen got a little bit of a boost to melee attack, and then he's planning on giving them a little more health, just to make them a slightly more viable infantry source, since their damage is low with good armor piercing, but giving them a little bit better chance to hit so that they, again, might just be a little bit more viable in melee. So not all of this stuff that he does is final, by the way. They're, they're testing a lot of things and kind of toying with it and making changes frequently. So this is basically their way of kind of tweaking away until they get what they feel like they want. So let's check out the armies. Obviously, Blademaster is going to be using Axemen. I see a, a mix of Cartley interspersed with standard Axemen. So it looks like maybe three of each there. He's got a horse skirmisher hidden in the woods up there. Three Eastern Archers on the flank, protected by an Ozit Knight General. Now, Ozit Knight's probably had a price reduction, I'm guessing, in his balance mod. Uh, four Eastern Cataph... or no, no, no. Two Persian Cavalry, two Eastern Cataphracts, and one more Persian Cav back here in the back. There's an Eastern Spearman there as well. So this is an all-rush front with the Skirmishers on the flank, which is quite interesting. Now, the Horse Skirmishers are going to make a run at the Soki Equites, which is a nice, nice thing for the horse skirmishers to do. There's another one on this flank, too. So let's see. The Roman player is playing Primarian, it looks like, and it looks like he may have left the Hestadi out and when he moved forward. <coughs> Excuse me. So I, I can see three Hestadi, or three Hestadi. There may be a fourth one hidden. Um, it looks like two Triari, a line of four Principe, a back line of, uh, or two more Principe in the back line, and I think there's a four, total of four Soki Equites, and they're kind of being assaulted a little bit right now by horse skirmishers. But uh, Blademaster is going to try and be careful with this horse skirmishers. The three Balearic Slingers up front are going to be dangerous. Uh, but not wanting to go head to head with the Balearic Blades, got his archers over here on the flank, hoping to cause some damage potentially. Uh, Good potential for a slightly downhill charge on very open ground here. Cataphracts could be quite deadly. The Hastati, though, are going to act as a kind of a meat shield and protect the Principe from taking a direct assault themselves. But if he can get Cataphracts, ooh, nasty jab volley there from the, uh, the Principe getting 12 kills on the Horse Skirmishers. Horse Skirmishers, though, just being annoying and kind of disrupting the Roman line, which is honestly what the uh, Armenians are going to need at this point. So let's see what happens here. The horse skirmisher is taking a beating, but again, decent job at disrupting the Roman line. More Hastati pulled to the flanks, which honestly leaves these Principe open to a pretty devastating cataphract charge if Blademaster chooses. We'll see what he does. He may not want to give up a cav advantage though. I mean, Soki Equites are not brilliant, but they're, they're cavalry. Let's see here, Axemen should beat the Hestadi, though, you know, in the past this wouldn't be a great fight for the Axemen, but they did pretty darn well there. Here comes the infantry engagement, let's see if, yeah, shock cavalry support right here, this is going to be major. Oh yeah, that's going to wreck that Principe. Right here though, this will be a good engagement for the Roman. This is going to be a rough engagement for the Roman over here on this flank, but Roman keeping reserves, very Romanesque, playing in three lines. And they're going to commit reinforcements here, where they took damage. Let's see how the Persian shock cavalry... 
continues the fight after the initial engagement. Roman infantry ought to start turning this around over time, even though the Armenian infantry is going to take kind of an immediate lead. Another nice charge here by the Eastern Cataphracts, hurting this Principe badly. Hastati breaking up front, Principe though holding the line as the secondary uh, troops and doing quite well at it. Another axe unit moving up. Just kind of see how this plays out. These Cartley Axemen are getting getting beaten pretty decisively, but it's starting to stabilize a little. Got archers on the flank and Persian cavalry pushing in. Cataphracts pouring in on this flank. Principe here as well with the Soki Equites, so Blademaster going to have to watch out to not get caught in a grind-out fight here with infantry support. Triari being thrown in. So the Roman doing a nice job of just kind of taking engagements back here, throwing in reserves where needed. But at this point, the cavalry for the Roman is overcommitted to this flank, and Blademaster is about to do some massive damage here with the Persian cavalry by getting into all these auxiliary Balearic slingers. And this is not good. If the Roman loses their cavalry over here and loses their skirmishers, these eastern archers and the shot cavalry are going to really wreak havoc on the, uh, on the Romans in the late game. So we'll have to be very careful. That horse skirmishers back here could follow up on these uh, skirmishers over here now as well. So the eastern archers pushing in from the flank. The grind out fight definitely going in the favor of the Romans. So this is obviously not buffed axemen to the point where they just chew through Roman infantry, but they are obviously putting up a, a, a better fight where the Roman did not get superior engagements. But yeah, right here, for instance, these axemen are going to get wrapped up eventually by those Principe. This is a very close fight due to shield wall and the Cartley axemen, and then these axemen were just straight beaten here by the Principe. So some pressure coming back this way. Got the Ozit Knight General here. And if Blademaster just kind of needs to be patient with this cavalry here and keep some alive for the late game. And he cannot let the Roman cavalry get to his skirmishers. Eastern Spearmen coming in here just to kind of block the Roman infantry. This is going to turn into a long-term engagement though. These Triari are going to be a tough unit to crack in late game. You're going to need the skirmishers. Yep, Ozit Knights now coming in after the skirmishers. This was a great distraction with the Eastern Spearmen. Excellent job here by Blademaster. Those Auxiliary Balearic Slinger is going to pay a little price, and then he's just going to get his general back to safety. So a uh, really nice move by Blademaster here, sacrificing the, the useless Eastern Spearmen and getting away. Legatus, uh, the Legatus could be a danger still to these units over here, so Blademaster is going to have to be careful. He's still got Shock Cavalry alive, Persian Cav here, Eastern Cataphract here. He's going to go into a Trample Charge into the back all this Roman Infantry. This is going to be a devastating charge for the Romans. Let's watch it up close. These Eastern Cataphracts are going to wreak absolute havoc on these uh, Roman troops here. It's going to crush the Romans there. And it's going to free up a much needed infantry unit for Blademaster. He needs infantry units kind of for blocking and tackling here. Uh, just hold up Roman units. With the skirmishers left at this point and with the Roman cavalry all bogged down over here, it's looking pretty good for Blademaster, uh, and this, this is where an Armenian player would want to be in the late game with shock cavalry, with uh, skirmishers left. This is the kind of game where the Eastern factions are going to excel, whereas the Romans, you know, obviously you want to use your infantry advantage and hold on to your cavalry until later in the game so that you can avoid just such a scenario. Now this, this is where Blade did not want to be. Roman Legatus bearing down on all these units. Probably a good idea to just sacrifice the horse skirmishers and start taking shots with your bowmen. Let's see what he does. Uh, this Legatus is going to get a piece of these archers at this point. I would have liked to have seen him sacrifice that, um, that horse skirmisher because now the Legatus actually ties down all three eastern archer units with a single charge. And it could very well kill all of them um, if Blademaster is not careful. And if that's the case, this battle could start swinging the opposite direction. So yeah, this uh, Legatis here making itself, uh, making its presence felt on the battlefield. Sending these archers scattering and picking up a lot of kills in the process. Definitely should have split up the archers before the hit, split like this. That way the Legatis had to choose one target and then the horse skirmisher should have intercepted the charge and then he could have poured fire back from all three split up archer units and the Legatis would have died there. Um, you know, these things are easier said than done. Sometimes players make mistakes in the heat of battle. 
obviously what happened here. Probably good to get these Persian cavalry out of this engagement with the Triari as well, and just let your Cartley Axemen finish that. Still looking very winnable for Blademaster here. Some of the Eastern Archers came back from routing, so this is going to be very good for Blademaster. And the Legatus is pinned down and now taking fire from the regrouped Archers, so this, this is what Blademaster wants. So Legatus is just going to pull through to try and get out of here, but at this point it's probably going to die because it can be shot from multiple directions. And then the Cavalry, the Ozzet Knights, a unit that you rarely see, uh, obviously made a lot more useful by the Balance mod. I'm assuming it's a price reduction, we'll go check it out. Oz at night, 103 kills, only 6 men dead, so obviously showing that it's now a potentially viable and valuable unit. Eastern Cataphracts here, 109 kills. So a very close game here against a Primarian Roman army. But again, I think that the Romans just ended up in that, that nightmare scenario, which is you're playing against an Eastern faction, and you get the late game and realize, crap, they still have cavalry, and they still have skirmishers, and it is just not a place that you want to be. So Cataphracts putting the charge on the Triari, but Triari are very resilient to charges. They're a very heavy unit with very good armor, very solid defense. Um, they can be pummeled by shock cavalry, but it takes some time. You kind of have to work these guys over. And here, this rear charge by the Ozzet Knight, that's what Blade Master needs right here. Knock them down, essentially, and then just kind of continue to cycle charge this Triari into an Oblivion. Now they're going to get into a square, and that's going to make them a lot tougher to deal with. Actually, that was not an Ozzet Knight. That was just two units of uh, Persian cavalry converging there. So keeping his Ozzet Knight general very safe. The Cartley Axemen can help deal with the Triari at this point. I don't know that there's any point to continue charging them. Because their uh, morale will be, will be so good. The uh, Roman Legatus got killed. And this Eastern Cataphract is going to hunt down and destroy that Hestati. Only one Eastern Archer surviving, but at this point it's enough. And really this Cartley Axeman can kind of just mosey on over here and uh, just, I, honestly, I would just, uh, I mean, you could just go for it, throw the Cartley Axeman in. I'm trying to think, you could dismount these Ozzet Knights too. So maybe throw the, the, uh, Cartley Axemen in, dismount the Ozzet Knights. You could probably dismount the Persian Cavalry as well. Try and take the Triari in melee. If you're really worried about that though, I think once he smashes this Histadi, it's going to be game over. Um, just due to army losses for the Roman. But we'll see. I mean, these, uh, these Axemen are still over here fighting against the Triari Square. In the square, the morale goes so high for the Triari that they become very difficult to get off the battlefield. So it is a good place to put them if you want them to be in a holding maneuver against, say, like, sword units that would otherwise slaughter them much faster. I mean, the Triari are, as far as a very heavy spear unit goes, they are probably the best in the game. Uh, they don't have precursor javelins, which is a downside, but I mean, just when it comes to sheer melee power and staying power, they're a very tough unit. And they can do a lot of damage to enemy cavalry. So these would have been the veterans of the uh, Republican Roman armies. Uh, the, most, the best equipped, the most experienced. Uh, forming kind of like almost like a hoplite type third line. Um, fighting kind of in an old style with the spears. So they were kind of like the fallback position in case the rest of the army was routing. Uh, the Triari would kind of be that, that last fallback position. So great, great play by uh, Blademaster. Again, go check out the link in the description to the Blade Balance Buddies group. If you want to go be a part of this and play this mod or give feedback and all that other stuff, of course you can always leave feedback in the comments here. I'm sure Blade Master will be checking those out. Appreciate him sending this to us and I, you know, I wish him the best of luck as they continue this balance mod. I think it's a great thing. Um, definitely a good opportunity. If I get a chance, I would love to host a tournament on this mod, like kind of like a quick flash tournament. But that's going to require me to have a day free, which is obviously difficult to do. Um, but I mean, I would love to do something like that uh, at some point. Let's check out those Ozzet Knights real quick because I wanted to answer that question for us. Uh, Ozzet Knights. I thought you could put them as the general. I guess not with Seleucids. Um, yeah, down to 1,080 in price from like 13 or 1,400. So that I think that's a fair price point for these guys. Very expensive, but still a good cavalry unit. Anyway, interesting. Air of Carthage signing off for now. I'll see you all next time on some more Total War Rome 2 action.